From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good morning. It's Dr. Paul, thank you very much for tuning to my channel this morning. I want to talk this morning about uh, Huntington disease. You see, Huntington disease, I mean, uh, there are many things to say about this disease, but I will just limit myself to the most important points. Now, it's a gradual disease characterized by chorea and dementia, and family history is important. So let's see the most important things. Huntington disease is characterized by chorea and dementia. Chorea. It's basically abnormal involuntary moments. Dementia basically is a serious loss of cognitive ability in a previously unimpaired person. I mean, we see some sort of cognitive loss with the aging, but when it is beyond that, we call it dementia. So Huntington disease is characterized by chorea, the abnormal involuntary moments under dementia, the loss of cognitive ability that is beyond normal aging. It is inherited as autosomal dominant disorder. It is prevalent throughout the world in all ethnic groups. And the prevalence has a rate of 5 in every 10,000 people. And there is an expected and unstable CAG trinucleotide repeat in the Huntington gene located on the fourth chromosome. Those are the genetics of uh, Huntington disease. So this unstable extended CAG trinucleotides on Huntington gene on chromosome 4. That's about the genetics. So it's an autosomal dominant disorder characterized by motor behavioral cognitive problems. It is first described by George Huntington, a family physician on Long Island, New York in 19th century. The onset of this disease is between 25 and 45 years and it is characterized by, you see, rapid, non-repetitive, and uh, involuntary moments. In the early stages, the chorea could be segmental or focal, but over the time, multiple body regions are affected. Many times they can develop dysphagia, gait disturbances. And with advancing disease, there is a reduction of chorea and emergence of dystonia, that is sustained muscle contractions with the twitching and repetitive moments or abnormal posture, there is a rigidity, there is bradykinesia. Bradykinesia means the movements are slow, slow ability to sustain movements. There is also myoclonus, that is uh, the twitching of uh, a muscle. And there is spasticity, that is uh, uh, the increased tone. So hypertonia, when the hypertonia happens, it's called a spasticity. Spasticity can also increase in the Huntington disease. So behavioral problems also start, like depression, suicidal tendencies, aggressive behavior, psychosis. And many times behavioral problems start the disease process. And a clinical diagnosis of HD should always be suspected when there is a, a chorea, a family history, and a behavioral problems. Now, there are certain things in pathogenesis, especially these words are important, atrophy of the caudate nuclei. Atrophy of the caudate nuclei, which form the lateral margins of the lateral ventricles that is very, very common. In fact, when you see those words, you should think of Huntington disease in a question. And this is, the gene is on chromosome 4. That's another important point, folks. So this is a disease that uh, has highest incidence between 30 and 50. It is progressive, but usually uh, leads to fatal outcome within 15 to 20 years. The initial symptoms, they consist of chorea, abnormal movements, or intellectual changes, but ultimately both can occur.
the earliest uh, mental changes you see irritability and uh, you see uh, moodiness of a patient uh, sometimes antisocial behavior and uh, psychiatric disturbances but a uh, more obvious dementia so behavioral problems and the dementia chorea these things could happen and dyskinesia may be sometime present and as I said, chorea could be segmental in the beginning, but ultimately it becomes, uh, uh, it spreads to all organs in the body. If you do a CT or MRI, you see cerebral atrophy and the atrophy of the caudate nucleus. Atrophy of the caudate nucleus. That's an important point, folks. And PET scanning. PET scanning shows reduced strata of metabolic rate. Now let me talk a few minutes about treatment. There is no cure for Huntington disease and the progress, you cannot stop the progress of this disease. So the treatment is purely symptomatic. So those are the three important points in treatment. There is no cure, progress, you cannot stop the progress and the treatment is purely symptomatic. And what symptomatic treatment can you do? Remember the pathophysiology. You see, in Parkinson's disease, it is the deficiency of dopamine, whereas in Huntington disease, it is deficiency of uh, gamma amino butyric acid, GABA. Okay, so that's an important point. Parkinson's disease, deficiency of uh, uh, dopamine, whereas in Huntington's disease, it is the deficiency of GABA. So the drugs that enhance the GABA activity, like tetrabenosine, they help in this disease. So tetrabenazine is like widely used to treat dyskinesia, but it has its own side effects like uh, depression, partial hypotension, and also some of them develop drowsiness and the Parkinsonian uh, features. And tetrabenazine, another important point is it should not be given within 14 days of uh, taking MOM inhibitors, you know, mono -M and oxidase inhibitors, you should not give that uh, tetrabenazine. And tetrabenazine is not indicated for the treatment of levodopa induced dyskinesias. For example, levodopa is the problem, uh, levodopa is the cause for dyskinesia, you should not use tetrabenazine. The another important drug is reserpin, but reserpin has very worse side effects, and uh, that's why we do, would not use that much. And the other drugs like uh, dopamine blocking drugs like uh, phenothiazines or uh, haloperidol may control the dyskinesias. So antipsychotics, another group of uh, medications useful in this disease like haloperidol or quetiapine or amantadin. So antipsychotics can be used in the treatment of Huntington disease. And the behavioral disturbances may respond to clozapine. So clozapine has also a role. Basically, the most important point, folks, is multidisciplinary medications should give neuropsychiatric support, genetic counseling. You need to see, uh, you need to give genetic counseling to the family and the family members because you say this disease is a genetic disease. And you need to give social treatment, like supporting them. And also, the patients should develop, uh, should receive antipsychotics because you see there is a, uh, a psychotic element to this disease. So you should use haloperidol, clozapine, and reserpine, amantadine, all these drugs which are useful uh, in reducing psychiatric symptoms. I mean, psychotic symptoms should be used in Huntington disease. So those are the important points about Huntington disease. Uh, hopefully you got something. Please post your comments so others uh, could learn more about it and visit our website at www.drpaul.com. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.